to fight for those who have gone and those who are still with us. And we fight for the future and we fight for the present. We fight for our own souls. Because if we abandon Palestine, then we have abandoned our own selves. There is a blackout on the fact that the majority of the world and actually the majority of this country does not want to see this war continue. And so that's why we are here in the rain and we will be here in the snow and we will be here in the ice and then we'll be here as long as we need to be because we are not just fighting for a pause. We are not fighting just for a ceasefire. We are fighting for an end to the occupation and an end to all U.S. backed and U.S. driven wars across the world. It is right to rebel. It is right to rebel. Thousands of people demonstrated at the New York Public Library and marched to the New York Times office on December 1st to demand a permanent ceasefire in Gaza. The protests come following Israel's announcement that it would resume its genocidal attacks on the enclave. The protests also demanded an end to all U.S. aid to Israel, the release of all Palestinian prisoners, and freedom for Palestine. At least 700 have been killed by the Israeli forces since they broke the ceasefire. Israel resumed its widespread bombing of Gaza following U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken's visit to Israel, wherein he reiterated the U.S. backing of Israel's right to self-defense. The protesters pointed out that Blinken and the U.S. President Joe Biden essentially have given the green light to Israel to continue carrying out a genocide in Gaza. The protest demonstration was organized by the Palestinian Youth Movement, the Answer Coalition, the People's Forum, Al Auda New York, and other progressive organizations. We charge the U.S. with genocide. The last two months has made the terms of our struggle crystal clear. Our struggle, the Palestinian struggle, is one that is at the forefront of fighting against global imperialism. And with this clarity, the U.S. role in the genocide on Palestine has never been more obvious to everyone around the world. But the U.S. wants the best of both worlds. It wants to drench its hands in blood in order to achieve its regional interests, and at the same time, pretends its hands are clean. We are here to tell them that there is no hiding their crimes. We gathered in love and rage and mourning and we gather again today in rage at the continued genocide of our people. We will never become numb to this genocide. We will never become numb to the numbers of martyrs rising. We won't become numb to the genocide of 1948, the genocide of the last 75 years, or the genocide happening right now. And we won't because our people bring us life. Our martyrs bring us life. And we're here to honor that and to carry the struggle forward. We are here to fight, to fight for those martyrs, but to also fight for the living and the liberation of the living. We fight for those who have gone and those who are still with us. And we fight for the future and we fight for the present. We fight for our own souls. Because if we abandon Palestine, then we have abandoned our own selves. We live in the legacy of the Black Liberation Movement. And Malcolm X said it really, really well. The Palestinian struggle is a struggle for humanity. It's a struggle for integrity, for the dignity of Everyone who has any inch of humanity in their bodies. That is the struggle that we're waging. The struggle for human dignity. And we will not let off. We will not let off. We are not going to sit idly by. The fact is, is that like every bully, the Zionist Israel and the United States White House are weak. They are afraid of children. They are afraid of women. They are afraid of families. They are afraid of a people who are standing up for their fundamental right to self-determination.
population. And they are afraid of this group of people. They are afraid of their own population that knows the difference between right and wrong. They don't want us to see each other. There is a blackout on the fact that the majority of the world and actually the majority of this country does not want to see this war continue. And so that's why we are here in the rain and we will be here in the snow and we will be here in the ice and then we'll be here as long as we need to be because we are not just fighting for a pause. We are not fighting just for a ceasefire. We are fighting for an end to the occupation and an end to all U.S.-backed and U.S.-driven wars across the world.